Good day and welcome back to Elementary 72 Gaming. Before we start this video, I'd like to ask you all to please leave a like or comment on my video. Consider subscribing to my channel and if you dislike the content, please leave a comment saying where it has gone wrong. Okay, so today's video is going to be a little bit of something which I was asked. So, on average I make something near 80 million ISK a day. Now, I do spend a lot of ISK a day. But this is more than my secret to making ISK very fast. Number one is farming the high level um, inquisitors and scouts in Nalsa. And number two is actually the story missions. Now, immediately the first thing which comes to your head is the story missions aren't that pricey. They're between 15 and 25 million for the small missions. And then you have to do T8 missions, which are a little bit longer on the on the task if you're going to do it solo so how is he making this massive isk the secret is actually as follows if i am going into nalsec the way i find my inquisitors and scouts are i'll head to a dead end i'll head to a uh, to an area within nalsec where nobody is really traveling somewhere really far out now the reason for it is a lot of players don't go and sit in dead ends and as you're jumping through gates you get a feel of how many players there are and you have to keep yourself on the game when you're jumping through these Nalsec gates because you're looking for those Nalsec gates where there's zero people in the area. Now, when you find the area with zero, you're going to look at the number of... Uh, what is this here? The number of anomalies. And you're going to look for the base level. If the base is destroyed, then someone has come through and they most probably cleared out all the bases, taking it for bounty and gear. In which case you turn straight out and head to another dead end. But if you find your bases are nice and high, you're getting six, seven, eight, you stick around. And what you're going to do is you're going to farm all of those at the same level as the base. And you're just going to keep running through. Now, this is the catch with doing it. You might have to spend something like four or five hours farming through all of these small little uh, missions. And eventually, after about an hour and a half, two hours, you're going to start seeing the missions gradually increase in uh, pace. And you're going to keep getting larges. Now, once you start getting a lot of larges in your base level, either your base is about to jump up in level, or Inquisitors, um, Scouts, and Dead Spaces are about to spawn. And the moment this happens you know that you're about to get what you've come for. Now, if you keep farming them, there is a possibility of recurring scouts and recurring inquisitors. But dead space is very difficult. I would suggest you have a team with you if you're going to go after dead space. T6 inquisitor and scout, easy enough to solo. T7, you can solo. It's about the same difficulty as a mission. However, the drops and loot from those missions are really, really good. Now, let's talk about doing this in another way if you're going to do the mission way of uh, pulling up your standards now number one thing to note is doing missions non-stop isn't going to be the most fun thing to do in the entire game the missions are going to be a lot more time consuming and the reward isn't always going to be good sometimes it's just going to be the reward for the mission you are completing other times it's going to be the reward for the mission plus loot that you get now example for me i've decided that i'm only going to do two for really good loot and that's going to be for patriotism and super soft drink now for patriotism is a very expensive mission to buy just off the back and super soft drink is a little bit more of a cheaper mission now the catch with these are their chests are worthless they're less than a million in value, so if you're thinking of selling the chest to recuperate some cost from your mission, you're not really getting anywhere. You're most likely running at a loss. Okay, so getting that out of the way, the next thing you need to think about is, what am I getting in for Patriotism that makes this mission worthwhile for me to complete over and over again? Now, it's actually the drops from the Elite that make it worthwhile. So if you're purchasing this mission, let me just show you how much it's worth here. Sorry, 
a habit of over pressing now if you are going in and you are competing for patriotism you average 15 million on your reward and you receive 20 million when you end up in a very unusual high sector now let's look at all of the prices here as you can see 12.5 is as high as they go so that's 2.5 million for you to make and the tax from your corp is obviously taking out quite a portion of this entire reward. Now let's go down to super soft drink. Okay. So as I said, it's on average 15 million. And there's tax from your corp and everything like that. So if you keep running it and you don't get loot, you are going to lose. However, super soft drink. This drops on average 20 to 25 million. Now that is a bigger amount compared to the other mission. So let's look at the price on these. Going up to 15 million. At 15 million, you're still making 5 million of this mission. Minus 2 million from your end cost. You're making 3 million profit directly from this mission over and over again. Plus, you're getting the breeze and loot. Now, the fact that it's 3 million doesn't make it all that profitable. But here's something for you to note. I did a total of 15 encounters in one day. And that took me just about four hours of gameplay to do those 500 to 700 in pay uh, encounters. But it took me forever to travel between them. And to be honest, it wasted more time than the mission does. Now, I would start a mission right now and take you through it. But instead, I am just going to give you an overview. Now, within this mission they drop Aurora Warp Core Stabilizers. Now, Warp Core Stabilizers, this is the best that there is in the game at the moment. So, if you keep farming Super Soft Drink and you get lucky... Okay, I've, I've gotten lucky in quite a few of these missions. I've had a drop of at least four Warp Core Stabilizers in one day. Now, that's 40 million ISK. So, 40 million added to my entire total. Now, I normally farm up these missions, and here's a trick for someone who has been just about zero. So, you go in, you lose you lose your ship, you've spent all your ISK, you're sitting at somewhere near 100, 200,000. You go in, you grab your base level ship, and you take on the little anomalies in your sector, T3. Now, your base level ship is going to be something small, maybe a Condor, maybe an Algos trainer and you take on these level 3 anomalies now it's going to pile up a little bit of isk for you you're looking to get somewhere near a hundred thousand isk at which point you go and you grab your trainer vessel which most likely is going to be caracal um stabber one of those trainer vessels you equip it with the cheapest gear you can find now, this is just the start on how you're going to get back in. And what you're going to do is, you are going to farm those same scouts for about an hour. Now, once you've upgraded your ship, you're going to fly through them like they don't exist. And once you've gotten enough ISK, buy up your, your fittings. Now, this might take you two or three days, and it might seem like it's really, really a drain on you, and it's a hard way to get back in. But don't leave the high set. Stay in high sec, keep doing all these easy tasks. At which point you're sitting at somewhere near uh, 1, maybe 2 million ISK. That's based on all of the rewards you've gotten, all of the loot you've picked up. Now all of the loot that you've been picking up, you are going to take it and you are going to reprocess it, regardless of your skill. And you're going to reprocess it in the market. Now you're most probably going to have a full cargo hold already by this point, maybe 4 or 5 cargo holds. So you go to your main market cheetah and you're going to dismantle it. Now I have made a video on how to work this. So you go and you follow that video steps. So you go to the market, you reprocess and you sell. Now that's going to get you a little bit more ISK. So from that 1 million, you might make something like 3 million all of a sudden. All of a sudden you're in the right league to get a nice set of missile launchers. Now you upgrade yourself in terms of your anomalies. You look for level 4, level 5. Once you pass the level 4 and level 5, you're immediately going to jump into your encounters. Now, you're going to take on your encounters to open the small missions. After about a day or two 
you're most probably going to be running at around half a million to a million a day and this is now going to be pushing you up again you you back up this is within about 7 days you know making a million a day you pulling it up fit out your shop so that it's nicely well set and your trainer is running well take on your small mission now when i say take on your small mission i mean take it on solo so the easiest one to solo is going to be for patriotism and when much as for freedom however the best rewarding mission is going to be so far the super soft drink so depending on what you have you go and you take it on solo make sure that you're playing safe don't play too reckless because remember you just came back up at which point you are now going to have 15 million now remember the higher end free chips are about 70 million which is what you're going to estimate in your head at all times sometimes it can go even higher so you're going to save up until you reach that level so what do you do to get there you keep buying these missions they're going to take you on average 2 hours to keep completing it so let's say for example you manage to unlock all four of the basic level missions the amar spaces mission is doable it's just way more difficult and it's going to take you way more in terms of time because of how hard they hit and the range that they have means you can't play the long distance game against them unless you're willing to sacrifice some of your tankiness and some of your survivability in the fight that means if you get hit you still have to run away from the fight nonetheless and unless you are running lasers as well it's not going to be a very fair fight for you So let's say that you keep running through everything and now you've completed all of your basic missions. That's 25 plus 15 plus 20 plus 25. That's 50 85 million. So you've made 85 million of all of the missions. What are you going to do? 70 million to buy a new vessel. Keep your vessel away in the base that you have. The remaining 15 million buy another super soft drink complete the super soft drink again remember you also making extra isk on the side you might have made another 5 or 6 million buy yourself a pair of elite level weapons now that's your challenge your muscles everything in that same class your first level elites buy them and put them onto your to your navy issue vessel now take your navy issue vessel out and go and complete the missions again it's going to speed up your completion time by a small amount. Now at this point you are actually getting back into the game. Now remember you spent 15 to make 25 and the loot is giving you that little bonuses maybe a million extra on top maybe half a million extra and that's where you are gaining the small little amounts to buy gear. Now if you keep farming say for example super soft drink and let's say you purchase 20 of these you might be able to complete four in a day. because super soft drink has a little bit of travel in between it that's how come it's worth 25 million and it's worth 20 million depending on the mission that you get most times you do get the 25 million sometimes you get 20 million when you have 25 it means you have a combat encounter without a station in the sector now the reason why you're going to need a station is there are newts and newts make you lose all of your power you're going to need a station to recover your capacitor because it's either do that or sit next to a planet for 5 minutes to regain your full capacity and jump back into battle and that will happen to you every 2 minutes when you're facing the elites in the start and once the elites are gone it's going to be a quick and easy fight you're just going to be able to run through everybody now overall it takes me about 1 hour to complete all the combat Remember this isn't just uh the same amount as for patriotism. In the first one it's 4 4 8 5 or 4 4 5 8. Now that's your first uh mission and I fly through it. It doesn't even take me more than 40 minutes to go through it and that's with the uh, CNI with basic uh challenge of missiles. And then I go on to the second part of the mission and it takes me just somewhere near 1 and 1/2 hours. If you've added it all together that takes me somewhere near 2 hours and 10 minutes. So at 2 hours 10 minutes I have completed my small missions. That's uh, that's quite a good uh completion time as far as I'm concerned. Now going back with everything that you've already completed, you're going to think about 
what gear and what loot you've picked up. Now, most of the loot is just going to be scrap. Some of the elite gear doesn't even hold any value. But you're going to get Acolyte batteries. They're worth about a million if you're lucky. You're going to get uh, warp core stabilizers. They're worth about 10 million on average. They're the real loot that you're looking for. Now, let's see if I have any good loot on me. Uh, okay, so I arrived at the station. Now, what I've done currently is I've purchased a few because after the maintenance, I'm actually going to jump back on and do a few missions. Now, let me just... Okay, yeah. Here's the loot from one round. Now, this is something, if I'm not sure, I'm not sure how much it's worth at the moment. It's not worth much. Worth just about half a million. This is something else you can pick up from these elites. Now, a lot of the gear is scattered and it can change from time to time on what it's going to give you. And selling it quick and easy is the fastest option for you. So I'm just going to select all and move to ship. Now, as you can see, I already have three missions. Now, what am I going to do with these three missions? I'm actually taking it and I am going to complete it. Now, how long will all of this take me? I did say it takes me two, two hours, 10 minutes to complete the combat, but jumping around takes another half an hour. So two hours, 40 minutes, plus getting back to the missions because I don't carry them all on me in case of me making a mistake. And this is my last trip for the day just one piece of gear I left to jump quickly. As you can see, I'm already stockpiling a whole lot of um, materials in the station for a quick sale. Now, the reason why I'm stockpiling them instead of just selling them in the small amounts is I want to be able to just get 10 million ISK at one go instead of making the small 100K which I don't notice. I'm actually saving it for building up on my battle cruiser and to be honest, I, I'm, I, I like Nalsec more because for two and a half hours of investment time of fighting, I most probably will make three times what I've made in all of these missions. And just saying it says that it's quite, invest, quite a good investment. However, I get destroyed at least two times a week in Nalsec, whether there's a war or, or not. But in a war, obviously, the worst problem is running into your enemy in the middle of a sector and having them gate camp you. I do make it through gate camps quite a lot. A lot of players have criticized my tank build, but it works against it. I've shot right through a blockade like it didn't exist. And that's because I use the tank builds to my advantage. Now, considering everything that I was talking about, making quick ISK, the other thing which you can do overall is selling that gear. Now, those good pieces of gear will sell quite nicely. I don't know if I have and you left on the market. Uh, let's just open the market quickly. Now, overall, when you're selling gear, it means that you are giving up a portion of your loot. Now, you could put it on your ship. That's a 10 million gain instantly. Remember, you don't have to go pick it up. It's already given to you from the mission. Okay, so all of the stuff that I put on the market is sold. So anyway, as you keep going through these missions and keep collecting loot and winning, there is one other piece of loot from the for Patriotism mission that is very expensive. I'm, I'm hoping it still is. I haven't looked at it uh, in a few days. Where's this electronic? The electronic warfare. Here we go. And this is what you're going to be looking at. Now, looking at the price, 20 million ISK. I'm, I'm counting it as 20 because even counting it at this price, which it's selling at 25, isn't actually 100% guaranteed. It doesn't sell super fast. It sells maybe like in every second or third day you sell it. Now, Jumping it on the market, that's 25 million. I'm, I'm not sure if the market's getting a little bit better because of the wars, but I haven't gotten a warp disruptor in a good while from the missions, and I'm not taking for patriotism because of the lack in gain from the ISK. So overall, spending 15, making 10 is a good way to go. If you keep making 10 with every single uh, super soft drink that you do, that's 40 million that you can make in a day. 
investing three hours times four, 12 hours into the game. That's if you have 12 hours to spend in the game. But what is the overall reward that you could pull out from these missions if you're just doing two a day? You're pulling out somewhere in your 20 million. Sorry. And with that 20 million comes the addition of being able to add to that 20 million. Now, what are you going to be adding to that 20 million? Is the obvious question which most people will be asking. You're going to be adding an additional million or two million from loot scraps that you are selling on the market. So that's another two million from each mission, four million ISK. Four million ISK of two missions, five hours, not really that big of a gain, but overall, if you're counting everything, five hours or six hours for 25 million. No, tw sorry, not 25 million, for 24 million. 24 million in a day, 22 million in a day, good enough for just running basics. But let's say that you do get lucky on one of the days and let's say it's a Saturday. You decide you're going to run all day. You have 16 hours to play. That means instead of just running four, you can run five super soft drinks. And if you want to do it a little bit faster, you can go down to Lurisaton Quay Factory and you can actually sit there with your missions and activate it in that sector. That's going to reduce your traveling in the area by a lot. And what you're going to do is you're going to collect all your loot. Once your loot fills your storage capacity, you are then going to head off to the market, drop off your loot, come back, complete another two, head off again to the market, drop off loot, come back, and you're going to keep using that little cycle. Now, a lot of this elite gear is worthless. You can take it and you can destroy it if you have to, or you can take it and dump it away in your corp storage. Now, when you put it in corp storage, this is the reason. It may not be very expensive loot, but it does give you an advantage and an edge in battle. And players do run all these weird builds. And say, for example, you're in a war and you're running at a loss of about 100, 200 million uh, ISK a day because of uh, loss in resources and players are getting zero non-stop you can help a player come up from zero a lot faster than my method of getting up solo now the reason why i use the getting up solo method if i ever have to is because i play that type of a game now in terms of my overall play i'm not playing very safe normally i keep a reserve equal to my ship that i'm willing to replace and i do have a reserve ship so I'm not playing very safe for my CNI at the moment and I have two trainers to replace it plus my one trainer is fully fitted and my other trainer is just sitting in a war zone where I can pick it up anytime I want to. Now overall what you are going to be thinking about with the next stage of uh, picking up loot, selling loot is how do I get to the point where I'm good enough to... Oh, I got stuck at the gate. How do I get to the point where I'm good enough to just go straight through and complete missions non-stop? You keep practicing. Number one, you learn the sequence and pattern of your players. Now, 90% of these games have a sequence and pattern for all enemies. And even if it's complex, you can learn it quite easily. Example, um, Galdari. The moment you break through any of their power abilities for the elites, they tend to run back towards the. They tend to run back towards the massive number of ships, and what you should do is the moment they run back, attack the next ship next to them. The moment they throw on the shield extender, attack the ship next to them. Now the reason for this is. The shield extender is giving them a little bit extra shield, making them a bit more tanky. And in that time, you are wasting your firepower against them because it doesn't even count to get you in. All you have to do is beat the next ship and become a little bit better at going through. And that's where you win. You're going to clear maybe a minute or two earlier on the entire mission and that's a win for you and overall that's a win for your progress through the game at the end of the day you're going to be an hour and a half ahead i have to actually get off soon because maintenance starts and then i'll do the maintenance video now that's what you need to do you need to be on that mark 
You need to know where they're firing, how they're firing. You need to know how much damage you're going to take. You need to know when to switch on your shield booster, when they're going to neutralize you, when to activate your afterburner, whether you should keep your afterburner on throughout the fight. Shield hardener is on throughout the fight. If you don't do that there, you're wasting a very cheap resource. And you need to know what you need to run in your last slot in your CNI or your Navy issue vessel. I'm running a warp stock warp core stabilizer which isn't very efficient for the mission that I'm taking on at the moment. I should be running a acolyte battery. Now the reason for that is it will counter the newt and a newt will be having a problem with the acolyte battery because it's neutralizing the battery instead of neutralizing my capacitor. However at the moment there is a slight glitch in it that I've experienced once or twice. They've been able to newt me from across the entire lineup of ships and that's over 70 kilometers, the newts don't have that type of range. So considering all of this, you need to make sure that you play in that right sector, that right formation, that right style. And I am telling you that there over and over again because this is the way the game progresses and that's where you're going to make your ISK. Remember we're falling behind, as I said the mark previously was 300 million a, uh, a week, the mark right now is somewhere near half a billion a week. That's 500 million ISK a week. And I am actually falling behind on it. Let's see, 80... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not really behind, but I feel like I'm falling behind because I'm spending a lot in the week. Now, you can do it without that heavy spend. You can dedicate two days to farming up missions. And then you can just keep doing your missions over through the week till you reach those two days and run that cycle over and over again. It actually ups your profit margins and the one day I actually made a massive profit. Now how much did I make? I sold a total of eight Aurora Warp Core Stabilizers in one day. It was pure luck. It was a Saturday. I was playing for a long period of time on the game. I played for much longer than most players. So I managed to get 8 warp core stabilizers, 8 times 10, that's 80 million. Plus, I did somewhere near the region of 6 missions. So 6 times 25 is 150, plus 80, that's 230 million on that one day. And from it, 230 million, as I said, you take the 6, you minus 6 times 15, that's 90 million out of the 250. I made a good profit on that day. A very, very good profit. And I did make profits throughout the week as well. And you can say that you must run at a, at a 300 million ISK profit in a week. But that doesn't really work because you're always spending. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. Hope you enjoyed this little tidbit uh, on making ISK quickly. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.